IMDb user Proper Gardens requested that I review all three Predator movies, so I decided to review the two this way, and then once I watch the third one in theaters, I'm going to do that in my regular format. I want to thank Proper Gardens for making the request, and if anybody else has any ideas for what you'd like me to review, go ahead. I won't always be able to fill the request, and sometimes it might take longer, but when I can and I feel I have something to say about the movie or video game, I'll be very happy to take requests. First, I'll tell you the story of how I got into both the Alien and Predator French. It actually wasn't the movies at first. All of my classmates were playing the first AVP, you know, this is around 1999, before the second game came out. And so, I started to get into it, multiplayer first, playing against the others, and then I completed the entire Alien vs. Predator game in the single player, did all the bonus levels, and really got into it. So, after I'd known about these two alien species for, I don't know, months, I finally sat down and watched, I think first the entire Alien Quadrilogy in, I don't know, a couple of days with a friend, a little later the first Predator, and since then, Predator 2. So when I think about these, I've actually spent so much more time on the games that it's more like when I watch the movies, I recognize stuff, oh right, they put that in the games, more than the other way around. Anyway, the original Predator. To be honest, I don't personally love the movie, but I can certainly recognize how great a film it is. The movie starts out really effectively setting the tone. You got all these tough guys, the main theme really exudes tension, and there is just no doubt in your mind that you're going to watch a movie about badasses. Arnie's got the cigar, the first time he greets Carl Weathers, they arm wrestle in the air, and we get that unforgettable moment of tension in the helicopter where Jesse Ventura spits onto Carl Weathers' shoe and they do the... That's a real nasty habit you got there. The testosterone is so thick you can practically smell it as you're sitting there watching the movie. Then they get the mission, they go and take out everyone in this camp. Arnie even gets a couple of one-liners, and at this point in the movie, you know, neglecting the skin bodies, the alien spacecraft, and you know, the fucking title, for all we know, it's just a regular Arnie flick. You know, it could almost be Commando, only he has a team with him. And then the first of his teammates is killed. Mere minutes later, another one. And it's at this point where many movies choose to then have the characters do stupid things and get themselves killed. Here, everyone tries to actually deal with the situation. You know, they're trained soldiers, and they're maybe not certain what they're fighting, but they're fighting something, so they're gonna fucking fight. The Predator is all the more terrifying in that these soldiers make very few mistakes. They're clearly capable, as we saw in how they rid the entire camp, and yet, one by one, they're picked off. Maybe this is a good time to talk a little bit about the characters. They are, of course, fairly stereotypical, and it's a pretty black and white movie, but they still manage to give them some personality. The only two I have a little bit of trouble telling apart are, well, the two skinny-ish white guys. I guess they put glasses on one of them, and there's the pussy jokes that one of them tells. Other than that, I think it's also that one of them gets killed as the first one, so there's less time to develop him. You know, they're distinct enough, but they're also all badasses. I really like that they have a Native American, and he's like the tracker, and in spite of how damn good he is, he can't find a single trace of the Predator. The Predator itself is very effectively built up in this. For a long time, you're not entirely sure what it is, just that it's threatening. For about the last two-thirds of the entire movie, it genuinely feels like the jungle might come alive and claim one of them. Even when they do capture it, it still goes badly for them. The hostility and isolation of the environment really adds to the threat of the Predator. We genuinely feel that these people are being hunted by it, and there's this strong sense that they're being watched by it. Most of the information we get about the Predator and this are like 
hints. We can surmise from what the female hostage says that the predator, or several predators, either come and go or move around a bit, go to different villages, different areas to hunt. You know, maybe to not attract too much attention, or cynically put, to ensure that there will be prey when they come back. You know, if you kill everything in one area, then you can't come back to that area. This makes such good sense for the hunting predator. The title predator is a little bit of a misnomer because we don't actually see it eat any of them. Then again, hunter or alien hunter or something doesn't sound as intimidating. The predator is genuinely a terrifying creature. How do you fight what you can't see or track? It really helps the mood that this squad isn't just going around gunning people down or something. Yes, they spend a lot of ammunition at the camp, but they do use guerrilla methods. Think about it, remember how it starts? Arnold pushes the truck down and starts an explosion. That causes confusion, and then they go into the over-the-top action sequence. And then, even with this army of men who are all one-man armies, they still take cover and, and they're sort of coordinating the attack. Does anybody else understand why on earth it was deemed necessary to blow up the helicopter? I'm pretty sure the two guys inside it were dead. Also, that has to be one of the most well-photographed miniguns in any movie ever. This and Terminator 2. I hope no die-hard fans go and make a trophy out of my skull for saying this, but it's always kind of bothered me how they keep going over, why didn't we hit anything? How come it never occurs to them that, oh wait, maybe it just ran off without us noticing? It's especially annoying because the audience knows that that's what happened. And it's not even a flashback or anything. We know that when they're standing there shooting, almost all of the bullets are fired after it's already run off. It getting hit and dropping some blood on the leaf happens almost instantaneously after the awesome Bill Duke starts firing at it. Also, the blood, doesn't she just kind of get a few drops on her fingers and then wipes it off on her pants and then later is like a big ass splotch of its blood. I really like that they set up traps for the Predator. Again, instead of just going around shooting or bitching about their situation, they fucking deal with it. Also, Kevin Peter Hall was one of the good guys when it came to playing creatures and costumes. Rest in peace, you tall, tall man. For not showing his face as the Predator, he really works to give it personality. It's not just a monster or a villain. It clearly is a hunter. You know, there's a code of honor. And most of the time, that makes for the far more interesting villain. It works really well how they die so unexpectedly. There's almost no death scene in this where you know that that character is going to die for more than maybe a couple of seconds before it. The Predator pits a bunch of men against something else. We don't know exactly what it is, but we know that it utilizes technology that we can't begin to understand. It hunts them, forcing them further down the food chain, and then their instinct kicks in. They go primal, and in doing so, they just exactly manage to overcome it. Well, Arnie does, anyway. It's not some high-tech laser gun that kills the Predator. It's human instinct and ingenuity. This also has some really great camera work, like that awesome long pan up the tree. For any fellow viewers of this film out there that might be old enough to remember the decade the songs came out, or decades, I'm not entirely sure, does Long Tall Sally have any relation with Mustang Sally? Were there just a lot of Sallys back then that were worth making rock songs out of? Honestly, as much as I like the Predator, I tend to prefer non-humanoid alien beings. Like the alien, for instance. It makes it seem more foreign and, and shows more creativity, I would say. 